That's what I heard the Lord say. So God says, shift your heart towards Joshua. As a matter of fact, and you can do this, and of course you do this in the time of God. I don't know how many discussions you've had with them about this, but I saw God, and I don't know if it's going to literally happen. I believe it is. But I saw there, I, I heard and saw the Lord say, you got to change the name of this church. I got to, I got to shift them because their minds are holding the wrong stuff. So in the time of God, I don't know if you said that to your leaders. I don't know if you thought about that. I don't know, but I hear the Lord say, you have to announce the new day. The Lord says, I put a scepter in your hand. And there's such a prophetic flow in you. They've changed it, but God says to them, that all the One of the things that we have to do in the next couple of moments is that we need to repent to God for binding up our pastor. God wants to send a fresh wind through your fellowship. But I get the Lord saying and showing me that headquarters got to hit their hearts right. Don't carry your name, and I'm just, I'm being, I'm just prophesying what the Lord said. He's giving me. You can't be headquarters and be uppity and don't do and have that. You can't be uppity and act a certain kind of way around other people. And you don't put your, you gotta put your time in. God's done. You put your time in. Y'all just chattering your faces. Just full of talk. I hear full of gas. That ain't my spirit. God said, I'm going to move you from great idea and good idea to God's idea. My mind, my heart. I see a plan in his belly. And if y'all literally would just follow it. I need mean, a short amount of time because I hear the Lord and see the Lord saying, I'm going to give them quick reward if they be obedient. I'm talking like by June, July. You will not only, not only will you see some old faces return, but you'll see a new influx of the kind of people that are going to say, we got you, Josh. I'm here. I need Caleb. We can take that. And after some of y'all got mad, you were bitter because Caleb did show up a few times. So y'all got mad because it was rushing up against your position that you didn't have to go Showed up. Well, guess what, sister? You're about to die. Yes. Yes. But God, you're the word Lord. You made him kill Caleb this time. You're not going to chase Caleb out. Oh, this is this generation, Caleb's come to fight. He's come to build. Wow. Caleb is loaded with money. Yes. Come on. Yes. I Just for about three more minutes. I know it's uncomfortable and maybe a little warm. But I need all of you that says, Lord, I heard you tonight. And I know that somewhere in here, you spoke to me, you spoke to my family. Some of y'all, I was like, well, yeah, you the one with the uncles. I'm calling you out tonight, too. I need us to crowd this altar if you know about us talking, spoken to you tonight. I just need you to come. This ain't about no title. This ain't about no pride. Like God, I know I'm guilty. I've held back my seed. I've held back my offering. I spoke too much to the wrong person. God, I chatted too much. God, I haven't given enough. I'm not faithful the way I should be to Bible study. I'm not faithful the way I should be to giving. There's something about to happen in Queens. And I almost don't even want to say it because it's pretty harsh, actually. But this is going to be a really rough summer for murder. But an intercessor can shift it. Praying churches, Pastor Sandy and, and First Lady of uh, Sandy, their backyard, would love for them to meet you. Their churches in Richmond, they came, Richmond Hills. They're amazing, amazing ministry. Just like you're an amazing church. Yes. This is an amazing church. But God says, I call you out of waste to me. 
Lord came and told me, this sounds crazy, but stop feeling secure like you can't lose this. So I can secure like I won't take him away from you. I ain't talking about dead take him away. Because he has to live. But it's going to be a rough, you're going to hear a lot of just bad stuff happening in Queens. In our city at large. But you're going to see like attacks against Queens. We gotta lift your prayer. We gotta lift this prayer out for Queens, all right? Cover our sons and our daughters in prayer. If your kids are here, Bob will have an altar. Bring your kids next to you. And what about prayer that God will let this go home with you? Start praying at home with your kids. You don't pray at home with your kids. Yeah, I gotta ask you. You are not praying at home with your children. They have no tolerance for prayer. Because you don't teach them how to have. Because you don't want Everybody come out and have a prayer closet. Some of y'all need to come out the closet and go to the living room and go pray. Now, I know that sounds funny. I ain't fighting against the movie. I understand personal time. Some of y'all got too much personal time. You got enough family time. I want you to talk to the Lord first and say, God, forgive us first as a church and as an organization for what we've done. Go ahead and pray. Come on, we're praying. I'm going to repent to the Lord. I mean, really, for us. Forgive us. And if you know that you're one of the people that have said some stuff or done some stuff, this is a safe space. You go over to your pastor, you hug him, and I'm tired of those knots. You go to I'm tired, I'm not. I come against fear, I come against pride of life. Worried about what they're going to think, what they're going to say. We don't care about that. We all need God. We all need God to help us. Come on, you need to pray. Talk to God. Come on, pray. Talk to God. God, forgive us. We want our leader to live. We want our pastor to prosper. Don't let our bishop die. He has so much in him. And we don't want to waste this time, oh God. We don't want to waste your, your plan for this region. God, you've given to him an idea for education. You've given to him an idea to work in music and to work in technology. Our church is supposed to be an uh, ingenuitous place where money and finance and idea is coming up out of here. Forgive us, Lord. Come on, pray. I need you to pray. You're moving your mouth. This is not where to pray. You're not praising God. You're repenting. Come on, repent. Repent, God. Forgive us for holding up vision. Forgive us for being like the Israelites that saw the land and heard the land but weren't accountable enough. Forgive us for not submitting and for missing services, going to other services without release of proper Lord God permission. We repent for our pride. Come on, pray. We want fresh oil. We want fresh oil. We want these anointings. We want the Lord God, forgive us for squandering power. Forgive us for wasting the energy of musicians. Dancing but not changing. God, forgive us for wasting our drummer's time. Playing, but God, we're going, we're even, some of us have been dancing, Father, but our hearts have been the same. Forgive us, Father, we ask. Come on, pray. Another minute or so. Pray, church. Pray, church. Pray, church. Forgive me for being critical of my brother or my sister. I don't know their story. I don't know what they've been through. I don't know their pain. I don't know their issues. I don't know their challenges. And I've opened up my mouth against their challenge. I've opened it up. I've seen it in the Forgive us. Let judgment pass from us. You don't have to just go into a whole lot of conversation. Just go hug them and say, I am sorry. Do it now and do it quickly. 
humbly and don't wait. Don't I rebuke the religious mindsets in the name. Don't wait to have the church right now do it. Some of you need to get to your pastor and apologize. While you're apologizing, untie him. I've got the people in my giving. That means you've been holding up this church from renovation. I've been faithful in my time. That means you've been holding up this church from going to the next place. You need to go to your pastor and tell him so. I'm sorry, my brother. I'm sorry, my sister. I'm sorry how I text you the other day. I'm sorry. Some of you mothers and fathers and sisters and brothers need to be saying sorry to your little your cousin and your brother. I'm sorry I cursed at you. I'm sorry I said it out. That's right. I'm sorry my attitude bad, Mom. Y'all need to be right here. Sorry for using that language. Some of your mothers need to be at your father and say, your mothers and women, your mother and the father need to be saying, sorry to your children. I'm sorry I haven't been everything that I told me to be, but after tonight, I'm going to where I'm supposed to be. Come on. There's a great outpour. Within the next 90 seconds, you need to fix it now so you can make sure they get it all. I'm sorry for judging you in secret. Come on, move quick, church. Move quick. Some of you still ain't moved. Some of y'all need to get to your pastor quickly. One of the things I keep feeling is people not being faithful with their time here. You're not being faithful with your time. Some of you old pastor, your pastor apology, I'm not been faithful. I'm a minister and I'm not accountable. You don't know where I'm at when you don't see me. You're drunk, that's wrong. I hear God saying, fix it. The other thing I keep seeing is people who are not being faithful with their giving and faithful with their time. Faithfulness and obedience will always bring out the word. I'm all across the board. You know, the Lord told me the other day, I never saw this before. I was ministering somewhere on Friday night. And I was I'm ministering, God showed me something. You know what God showed me? They brought up Joshua. It was crazy when he said, God said, walk around the walls. And they walk in all those days like this guy got to be out of his mind. All this walking back and forth. They got arrows and spears. They have to be about to kill us. He's talking about walk around these walls. So you know what God showed me? He said they were they didn't realize I was weakening the ground around the wall. Because their, their feet kept going. He said I was letting the ground get ready for them to take it. They didn't even know. You know said that's what God says, your our obedience weakens the ground to the land that belongs to us. Ain't that something? Are you completely free? Who else am I waiting for? I'm not shifting, I'm not prophesying until you fix it. Some people that owe legitimate apologies. I've been asking you to go into detail. You just need to go, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for saying that ain't it. If that's what God told you, Pastor, I follow. I'm wrong. I'm sorry. Because you're my pastor and you're the evil God. When we in trouble, you're going to get you, not me. But I'm a follow. What I'm telling you is what I did before I ever became a pastor. Times I wanted to get up and fight my, my parents for my past. I wanted to walk out. Y'all here with y'all self and God do the y'all self. Because we get pride. We got it. We ain't got it. Your character's still jacked up, so you still need a pass. That's kind of stuff God told me, and we don't get that. And I had to still sit and obey and still be faithful. Are you free? Jesus. What I now need you to do, because there is a great day coming.
come into this church. Yes. And today it starts right now. Now, and I'm not now listen to what I'm saying. I'm not trying to hang you. I'm telling you what I see in the spirit. You're going to see a bursting of ideas and a bursting of uh, pastor. We're taking back that project. I see a development team that it's not formed already. I need if it's up, I need to get the executive pastor, a leader, or administrator. I must pray for whoever you are. Who's that? Oh, I'm glad at you. Because that's what I felt. I'm so glad at you. I wanted to pray. I, you know what I wanted to pray for. Because she got it all over her. Come close. You got a team? Who's your team? Grab your hand. Grab a hand. Y'all stand across here. Because God's going to anoint this executive team. Did y'all bring in no men on that team? No man is on this team? All right. You want to he said, he joined in the team? <laughs> he joined in the team today? Uh, All right. What you do here, mister? What, you don't do nothing yet? All right. I ain't giving you no position. I'm asking a question. Hold on. Y'all not on the this team? Y'all not on this team? Let me say this to you. God's going to today. One of my charges is to lay hands on the administrative team of this church. I can't go here. Like, oh, he just gets that promoted? Oh, he did. <laughs> God's going to anoint you to bring resources here. I don't know if he's on salary. But if he is, he's about to be on. If he's about to give out an increase, then y'all gonna make it happen. Within the next 12 months, I need him not to worry about it. anything except for what we need to do to pray. All we need you to get is the word of the Lord. Because these next 12 months for him are very, very crucial. And I need every single last one of you of you here. Stop being lazy. Mm. If you don't agree with the idea, that's okay. I don't agree with everything. But teamwork means I work. Not I work. It means I work because I'm on the team. And if I have an issue with what was planned, I don't go tell her in the car to ride home. Not to tear it down. If we were talking about it after the meeting, it should be, hey, you know what? I don't know if that's going to work for us, but let's do this. Let's go and bring it to her next, before the next meeting. It's not about tearing her down right, to make right. you look good. You look ugly. You're, that's ugly. And we just repented. I see all these tears in people's eyes. You just repented. Don't you go back to it. God's going to deliver us. To, he's already been delivering in us. But we're going to go to a new level where we're going to let the spirit of opinion leave our life. God just taught us today how to think correctly. God will really use you. I'm telling you, so don't be playing that now. Be the most faithful you've ever been. I'm telling you. God wants to do some rescuing in your family, in your own home. You see, where God wants to send his glory to your home. You see, the atmosphere of your house moving from out of despair and depression to a place of glory. So you stay close, right? When I say give God praise, I'm talking about that weak, old, crazy, uh, thing you know, yeah. no, I need you out of your belly. Say, God, I know we heard from you tonight. That's why you said you came up, because you heard it. I need you to praise him accordingly. Last thing I'll say before we praise is if you will allow me, I will I will donate two, uh, three hours of consultation time as a grant writer to your church to come and sit with your entire team to help them map out a plan to bring money to this church. Right? I'm, not, I'm not boasting, I'm not being funny, I'm, I'm honestly, I have a real Nehemiah anointing. To write a letter to the king and get the resource. Or rather, let the king see my face so he can write a letter. 
me that I'm sorry. So before you leave today, before I leave today, I'm going to make sure that we set a date today so that you can let your team know by this week so that we can set it up because there's a major move that's going to happen right around here.
teaching of scripture that there is therefore no condemnation to us that are in Christ Jesus. I hear the Lord saying to you tonight, I need to run out of the past and run toward your future. So why are you crazy? I've already forgiven you. I've already let it go. I'm in a place. I don't want to find it. So the Lord says, God, give me a word of praise. Give me a sister praise.
Nothing shall ever come through. Nothing shall ever break through. Oh, we've been free tonight. Chains have been broken tonight. Just embrace. Embrace him. Embrace him. Come on. Embrace somebody you ain't ever embraced in a long time. Yeah. 